Hey everybody, it's the Commodore from the Clan of the Grey Wolf, and you are watching the weekly Ringer series here on clanofthegreywolf.com. Uh, lots to get through today. Great conversation from last week um, around uh, some some I, I, what I think to be some of the more deep questions we've had here on the Weekly Ringer about a decade-long console cycle. Um, you guys really stepped up to the plate, as always, and delivered a lot of really great comments. So I'm looking forward to uh, kind of hashing some of those out, delving into some of the arguments that surround it. And as always, you guys have plenty to deliver. Um, in any case, I'll do that, wrap it up uh, from you guys' end, wrap it up from my end, as I always do, give you, giving you my own opinion. And then we'll go into the question for next week, which is, unsurprisingly, about E3. But uh, maybe is a question that you wouldn't expect. Uh, about E3. I'll just put it that way. Now, before I continue on, I want to say something uh, before we get into the, the meat of the argument or even welcoming the new folks. And that is a, a message to the male white mage who uh, did something this week that I thought was just awesome. Um, creating a, a Minecraft, a fully blown, you know, uh, seemed to be obscenely tall Minecraft model of the blue creature you guys have seen behind me, who actually, well, first of all, his name is Jorge, the party animal, and he has been a fixture of the Weekly Ringer. I think I put him randomly in the first video, not really knowing exactly why, uh, not really knowing what exactly people would say about it. Not a lot of people did, by the way, and until he, till he was taken out of the videos, and then people said, said a few things, and then I put him back in, and people were, were excited. So I need to find creative ways um, to get Jorge back in the video. But in any case, I wanted to say thanks to the male white mage. I need a copy of, of you know, a couple snapshots of uh, Jorge the party animal so that I can post them and, uh, and, and, and you know, s send them out as I, as I will, because I think it's a really cool thing. By the way... Not many people know this, but Jorge the Party Animal was actually procured during Rue's bachelor party. Um, I'm sure there are some interesting stories tied to that. Uh, I, I, um, I remember it well, but in any case, we, uh, we probably shouldn't talk about such things here on the Clan of the Grey Wolf. So any, anyway, I um, wanted to say thank you very much for the male white mage for making that. That really made my day um, when I looked at it. I thought, man, this is fantastic. These guys have really taken to... Uh, to good old Jorge and, and his um, and his exploits. So anyway, that's just a cool little aside note. I, I love all of you guys that have been fans for so long. You know, it's uh, it, it's a great thing, right? Those of you that have been with me from the beginning, um, what a long, strange trip it's been. We've had a lot of great questions, and and uh, it's just great to see you guys coming back week after week and noticing something like uh, my good pal Jorge here being uh, you know being put on display. So, that being said, why don't we get to our new folks so I can welcome you all to the conversation as well. We had a fair number of, of new folks this week, which I think is always great. Um, I like to take a little bit of time at each video and recognize the new folks just because this is a community we've built here. And you can't have a community, I think, uh, a living, breathing, organic kind of community unless we welcome everybody uh, that's brand new so that they come back and, and, and join us for a while. Like I said, a couple new folks for this week. Number one, Backfire. Welcome to you. Uh, and by the way, great comments across the board from our new folks this week. I thought, uh, uh, and great comments from all, quite nearly everybody. I think almost everyone that put in a comment this week made me think about the argument in a different way. So much applause to all of you, not just our new folks, but I thought our new folks did a great job this week as well. Uh, so welcome to Backfire. GLH Shelby. Welcome to you. I think that's a pretty interesting little uh, uh, series of words. I'm trying to think if there was a Shelby Mustang with a GLH designation. I can't think of that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not putting the pieces together at the moment. But anyway, welcome to you. Insight27, welcome. As we always love to see new insight here on the Weekly Ringer. Great to have new insight on board. Welcome to you. And for Enclave, which is just an awesome name, Enclave. Um, you might or might not see a few comments from our new folks on the comments that I bring to the conversation this week because I thought they were so good. So, uh, welcome to all of you. Can't wait to see what you do for the Weekly Ringer moving forward. It's great to have you on board. Now, the question that I asked last week was really surrounding your ideas about a 10-year console life cycle. 
You know, as, as many of you know, Sony promised that a long time ago, or at least talked about it when the, before they were launching the PS3, and everyone laughed, uh, and everyone mocked them, as many of you mentioned. Um, you know, because it's the idea of a 10-year console life cycle seemed absurd. Not just because of the experiences we've had to this point, um, but because of a lot of reasons many of you brought out already. Now, I concur with that, but... What I asked you was, it seems to me, especially in the light of how well the Xbox 360 is doing, poised right now to have the best year that they've had since they launched, by a lot, um, is that um, they are basically in a, in, in a place where they're kind of defying the standard, where they're, they're pushing beyond the standard uh, confines of what a traditional arc in terms of sales, in terms of revenue generation, because that's what it's really about. It's not necessarily about console sales as much as it's about revenue generation, right? And I, maybe I was a little bit less clear about that. And I know the middle white mage asked me to publish numbers, and I apologize I didn't get to it this week. Um, but I can show you um, uh, simply for next week. I can post a link for it. But what I was looking at was a graph that was related to revenue generation. That doesn't necessarily, obviously, I'm sorry, doesn't, doesn't, I guess, solely look at how many consoles have been sold, although the 360 has been in the lead for a while. It shows also how much money gets generated at the point of sale and for larger online vendors um, by virtue of that system being in existence, whether it be peripherals, whether it be games, you know, whether it be DLC. Um, or something like you know arcade classics, things like that. Whatever kind of things kick up revenue, that's kind of the numbers I was looking at. So I should have clarified that a little bit. It wasn't just pure console numbers. Um, in any case, you guys seem to, to take this idea off and run with it. I asked you what you thought about it, and you know I think there were a couple of overarching thoughts. I have I have a good number of comments here, but not a tr not a huge number, and it's not because any of you didn't have great ideas. Many of you had awesome ideas. And like I say, I, I, I actually had to stop at one point while I was reading over in preparation for the video because nearly every comment I read, I would sit there, and I love when this happens because it makes me feel so good that we've assembled such a great crew here at the Clan of the Grey Wolf, is to be able to say, wow, that's a great point. That's a good point. That's a, that's a great point. That's a good, and you just kind of keep going down. And um, if I went through and put a comment and, and mentioned on the Weekly Ringer of, of every time I said, that's a great point this week, um, I'd fill up the video with your comments and it wouldn't be anything else. So um, that's a great sign. That means you guys are really you know, ratcheting up the intellectual quotient here. And that's why I started this whole thing. So you guys definitely deserve a round of applause for the entire community this week. And you get it from me for sure. Um, pat on the bat, back all around for you guys. Um, in any case, some of the overarching thoughts. One, I think, you know, for, as consumers, none of us would mind a 10-year console life cycle. Obviously, why, right? Because we, hey, we like to buy, we make, if we're going to make a three or $400 investment in a piece of hardware and it's uh, accoutrement, as it were, then, um, you know, and then you're going to stack games and, uh, you know, the service and everything under that, right? Um, the thing better lasts a long time or make me coffee or tell me when to get out of the bed in the morning. The point is, it should do a lot right? We want to see that return on our investment. And getting 10 years out of a console seems fair in some ways. In other ways, it seems staggering and ridiculous. And many of you talked about this as well. We're seeing a lot of trends in video gaming now that indicate that maybe there's a little bit of a slowdown in terms of the progression of what a console could offer us. I think that's a fair point. I'll get into it more in a little while. Um, but many of you are a little skeptical to see any of that happen. Some of you are even skeptical as to what, what we really mean by a life cycle. And um, I think that's a very valid contention and one I'll cover here when I, when I talk about the comments as well. So in short, if I had to make a summary of what you guys have really said, is that as consumers, you'd love to see a 10-year console life cycle. But you don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And, you know, at the center of it all, it really comes down to, this was a very, very big point, the kind of give and take. I, I think of it more of as a symphony between, maybe I'm being overly dramatic, I think of it more as a symphony between hardware and software really working together to create new experiences, right? 
So many of you mentioned great games, many of you mentioned you know, hardware and the relationship between those things being what drives the console life cycle. Not necessarily technology, not necessarily Moore's Law, but the idea that there is a kind of synergy between hardware as it comes together with good software to produce experiences that are new, exciting, different, um, fun, above all else, right? And I think that's a keen observation. I think it's the bottom line that we should get to here, but um, there's so many other points to talk about that I think, you know, uh, we could really we could focus a weekly ringer on any one of them. But I thought, if I, if I just pounded some of those things out, those were the main ideas you guys came up with. Everything kind of fell underneath uh, 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 those ideas. And by the way, same with me. Same, with the ideas that I came up with, um, really fit into those categories as well. So that's, that's to be expected. All right. That being said, let's dive right into our comments. So the Bowtie guy talked about the idea of a 10-year console life cycle being inevitable. It's inevitable. And the Bowtie guy definitely likes that. that. No problem there, right? And I think it's the inevitability of a 10-year life cycle is an arguable one. But I think the idea that, um, that there are at the moment, market trends, movements in consumer uh, activity, let's say, that would create an environment within which uh, and the inevitability of consoles lasting or having a 10-year life cycle, um, to me, is, um, is, is interesting, but I think it's a stretch. I, I think it's a stretch. There are several, I think, reasons why um, we could see it, and there are several reasons why I think we wouldn't see it, which is really why I was asking the question, right? So the idea of it being inevitable is an interesting one. I'm not sure I buy into it yet, but of course, if it is to be inevitable, then I think we'll all be very happy with it because of the fact that consoles lasting 10 years is an awesome idea. All right, DJB123 um, mentioned the idea of that many of you repeated, which is this. And again, this gets to that kind of symphony between hardware and software. That this all might be just a moot point. Uh, maybe a generation, maybe two generations from now, probably two generations from now. And the reason why is because consoles, PCs, regardless. Experiences and entertainment, let's just call it entertainment right now, whether it be gaming, movies, music, Whatever, TV. If, if you look at entertainment right now, one of the big trends is not only mobility, but the capability to really put things in the cloud. And I know that many of you, like me, hate that term. But the idea of putting it somewhere else, other than what you host yourself. And the idea that, that your content could be available somewhere and then somehow was simply blasted out to you as you needed it, rather than um, uh, as a more traditional model of having a tremendous amount of software horsepower, um, or, or software and hardware horsepower in your location, and then kind of decoding it um, and, and parsing through it locally, uh, is really changing very quickly. It's speeding along very quickly. So I think we could easily see that trend changed this entire argument because at that point guys what is a console besides a very advanced monitor right um, and if you look at this year's E3 which is an interesting point to use for next week's question although I'll get to that later you know if you look at this year's E3 it largely wasn't about a lot of the gaming experiences it was largely about all the experiences that come along with owning a gaming console in the year 2012 and into the year 2013 so this means, I think, that the experiences are changing and the console capability is really not very important if all of your content resides elsewhere and then gets pulled down um, to wherever your location may be. Great point. Definitely worth mentioning. Several of you talked about that moving forward and I couldn't agree more as that being uh, a, a, an example of a trend that's changing everything. Backfire, one of our new folks, had, a, um, had an awesome comment. And, and this, 
This is the kind of thing that's outside the box uh, that I'm exactly looking for here on the Weekly Ringer. So um, it just hats off to this comment. A 